Hi, I'm Seth Welde with Seed, and I'd like to introduce the Azure Sphere MT3620 Development Kit. This is the first development board with Microsoft's Azure Sphere solution. There are three parts to Azure Sphere. First is dedicated hardware. This includes two cores that are dedicated, one for security and one for Wi-Fi connectivity. The security core has a unique signature when manufactured that is recorded by Microsoft in the manufacturer. The second is Azure Sphere, a new operating system, which among other things, provides multiple core memory protection, as well as secure and robust APIs for security and connectivity. The final part is the Azure Sphere Security Service, which allows for a secure cloud connection using the device's specific hardware signature, removing the chance for data interception. The Azure Sphere MT3620 Development Kit features MediaTek's MT3620 chipset. This is the first chipset to meet Azure Sphere's hardware requirements. Two of the cores, as I mentioned before, are dedicated, one for security and one for Wi-Fi connectivity. These can only be accessed via APIs. There are also three user accessible microcontroller cores, one ARM Cortex-A7 and two ARM Cortex-M4S. This makes it a crossover MCU, allowing some high-level flexibility and logic while enabling real-time capabilities and precise I.O. manipulation. For connectivity, the board supports 802.11a, b, g, and n Wi-Fi at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It has two onboard antennas for antenna diversity as well. The breakout headers support GPIO, UART, I2C, SPI, I2S, PWM, and ADC. There are four user RGB LEDs and four status LEDs. Power can be provided either through the micro USB or the DC jack. In this demonstration, the Azure Sphere MT3620 development kit is connected to a temperature sensor, a four digit display, a sliding input, a relay, and a device which has its own MCU. The two devices communicate via UART when the temperature raises above a specific threshold, the device is enabled and its operational characteristics are controlled by the sliding input, in this example, either increasing or decreasing the device speed. When the temperature has fallen below a second threshold, the device is then powered off. Note that in this example, we use an additional Grove Shield to make the prototyping of this demo very quick and easy. The Azure Sphere SDK uses Visual Studio, here you can see our demo code. Know how we set up the Wi-Fi connection quickly and easily in main.c. Next, we will connect this demo to Azure IoT. Once we've done this, we can rebuild the solution directly to the device. Then we can use the remote debug tool to access the device. Note in the console that it streams back the live temperature data. Now we are going to look at the device explorer. In here, we will see the device twin. You can download the device explorer from Microsoft's website. The device twin is a JSON copy of your device in the cloud. So you essentially have two copies of your device one physical and one digital in the cloud. Any changes you make to the properties stored in this JSON file on the cloud will immediately be synced with your physical device. Any changes made to your physical device will immediately sync with the cloud JSON file. So we go to portal.azure.com and grab our connection string. Once we've done this, we can go back to our Device Explorer, Update, and then we can go look at the devices and list them all. You'll see there is one connected. That is our physical device here. Now we can change the device properties and update the temperature threshold values. All we need is some simple JSON. Once we send this change, you can see that the console recognizes it and updates to match its twin. 
Next, we will trigger it by raising the temperature. In this demo, we have a push button that simulates a device error. When we check the device hub, we can see the messages as they come in that the device needs maintenance. We hope you found this video helpful. Please visit us at the link below if you would like to know more.